Hello, this is Colt from Spittin' Tax Upholstery. I'm uh, getting everything together here. Uh, welcome. So this is a boat uh, back seat. Uh, the top of the back of the boat, uh, the ski pad and uh, the inside seat, back of the seat. So we're uh, tearing it apart, making patterns from the original patterns. So I do these videos on purpose. So uh, not everybody knows how to make a pattern from scratch, okay? And this is something that 90% of everybody is gonna try to make it just like it was, okay? Uh, and I do it all the time too, you know? Very rarely I don't use the pattern, you know, unless it's just one solid piece. It doesn't have two tones in it and swooshes and stuff like that. So this is what we're using today. We started off with the seam ripper. This is the bottom lumbar of the, of the back of the, the stern of the boat. And uh, we took off one piece, okay? This is the left side. If you're looking at it good side, left is, is left and right is right. But when you turn it, you know, inside out, it changes. But So what I do, like I started on the left, okay? The bottom of this gusset is, uh, oh, it's right, it's right here. So we're ironing today, okay? I got a board, I got a weight. I start off, okay? I'll put a, a one dot there and two dots there, okay? That's my top, that's my bottom. Right here, one dot here, two dots there. So you know, if you get confused, you know where to start, okay? You can either start on the two and come around down to the one, okay, and you're good to go or whatever, vice versa. So I do that on both sides. There's this one big long piece here, okay? And it has two little gussets on the end. So what I've done with this one, like I see how I mark it left, right, on the front, bottom, two, you know, just get into habit of marking them always, all right? So also, we're, uh, then you have a board, and I use like an old piece of railroad tie, and then I just set my stuff on top with my water that I fill up my iron with, and that gives it weight. Okay, to make it flat like that. Okay, I just ironed this out. But there's another thing that I like to use. I used to like to use the faultless premium finish. Okay, this is like starch. You know, get it real wet. Get your pattern real wet. I haven't done this one yet. I get it real wet. Front and back. And then I lay this down and just give it a nice little coat of this. Didn't take a whole lot. And then I just iron it. But uh, people have been asking about this. So this is what we do. I just got an old piece of OSB particle board. Before I start, get yourself a spray bottle and get your ironing board wet, okay? Get yourself an iron that'll steam. Uh, these rowers, this is a killer iron. I got this at a thrift store for two bucks, man, and I've been rocking this for three years. So shop around, you know? I th think this is like a $90 iron or more. Yeah, man, two bucks, two, three bucks something like that okay so then I okay that's wet I'll give the vinyl side just a, just a slight mist and then the bottom I'll get it wet okay any old any any real long threads you want to pull out because it helps the pattern lay flatter see these threads I'm pulling out so try to get the big long ones and then you take uh, this start spray and just spray it on the inside Okay, about that much. Grab your iron. Just uh, get in where you fit in. But I do this so you get a proper pattern. And then we're going to talk about um, sew allowances. Oftentimes when people have it sewn together, they don't like how it's laying. So they'll go back in and they'll trim like around the the edges of the seat where the seat contours so you can't see it you know it doesn't show through you know there's uh to have to like on chairs and stuff you can fold that salvage in or, or seat cushions you can fold you always fold that salvage in so you can't see it you know from the top it doesn't leave you can see that little line from where those two pieces came together anyway that's what they do and, and i'm going to point that out here in a minute but we're doing patterns again this is marine upholstery Okay, and this uh, happens to not be marine vinyl. And this is an expensive boat. 
So I, you know, it's crazy. Sometimes people cheat you. You know, that guy, this guy probably would never, never, ever, ever have known that. But anyway, so I come through and I just give it a real good hot and I give it a little another mist to water. Get it real, 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 real good and hot. This is probably fine, but some of them are really resistant and you gotta iron the dog out of them, okay? So I get it real hot, grab my board, lay my board down, put my weight in the middle, my, you know, as much weight as you got handy. Water, iron, whatever, spray bottle, and let that sit for about three minutes, okay? And then it comes out like this, all flat. So going back to the uh, sole allowances. Now you'll notice, see this? This is a half inch sole allowance right there and then it goes down a little thin. There's a lot of people that don't do the true half inch sole allowance. It'll save your bacon in the end. <clears throat> Especially if you wanna do a top stitch on top of it once you sew the two pieces together and fold it out and you wanna do a decorative top stitch. You need that half inch sole allowance in every bit of it. Uh, but see how they come around these corners and they cut it down to you know, an eighth in some places. So you see how it wobbles. You can see, you can see how it's real thin right there and then real thick and real thin. And then it dies. I don't know what that is. He just cut a big piece off of that, you know, and then the bottom, that's where it staples to the underside of the seat. So oftentimes what I do is the longest point, I'll come down and I'll just make a straight line when I make my pattern. Okay. Because you can always trim and adjust that. But that's just the thing I like to do. It's an aesthetic thing. It makes me feel better. Who knows? I'm a weirdo. But anyway, so this is the left gusset. We have that ironed. And this is probably good. And then uh, this is our right gusset. Flat as a board. Okay, we'll set these over here. And then, then what I like to do when there's, there's you know, allegedly there are mirror, mirror images. So I'll take these two, good side to good side, and see what we got. That's what we got. So where the sew stop, you know, the stitch stops, you line those up. That's pretty damn close. But, and so from there, I go and I pick the best one, you know, the, the one that my eye tells me is, you know, but these are pretty much identical, identical, it doesn't matter. So what I'll do when I trace these out is I'll take one, okay, let's say the brand new vinyl's laying here. You always put your vinyl down. Let's say this is a brand new piece. And then I take this pattern, okay, and I'll put it face down too, okay? And this is the right, so. It's like this, basically. Let's just say this is the new vinyl and I put the old vinyl down to make a pattern. Boom, you see that? Or no. Yeah, so I will trace that one out and cut it and then I'll flip it to where it's good side to good side. So then you get your left and right mirror images and, and them patterns are identical that way. Use one pattern when you have uh, identical ends and just flip it, okay? You, you trace it one way and then flip it over and trace it the other way on, the, on the, uh, the, vinyl, the new vinyl and it'll come out and then you know it's perfect, okay? Then you know it's perfect. And you do the same thing after you get this ironed out. This is the main, the main, uh, main body. Once, okay, so you got two ends. So once this is traced out, then I'll come back through and match up just these ends. Like some of this isn't as, as, as imperative, but I will still go ahead. You'll see how it, it, you have these dog ears. I'll just make it one piece. That's just something they trimmed when they upholstered it. But make sure that the pattern is mirror, mirror, the body is mirror. Witness marks, you fold it in half, right there, right there. They have a witness mark there. At least they have on one side. And uh, my dear friend, Ron Pearson, one of the best upholsterers on the planet and his dad, Carl, here in Spokane. Carl's been here forever, Norwegian upholstery. He's a rock star, 93 years old. Those guys are my mentors. I love those guys. 
uh, class act. Uh, they'll tell you, witness marks are your friends. That's their logo. All right, I squirreled off there. But upholstery is awesome, and it's art, and it's beautiful. And uh, get into it. Get into it. You know, get into it. Uh, you don't got to hang your head when you do upholstery. You know, it's just like graveyards. Everybody's dying to get in there. <laughs> I know that was corny. But uh, upholstery, everybody's got a couch. Everybody's got an ATV. Everybody's got uh, a seat in their shop. And that stuff wears out. So it's money in the bank. Some of it wears out quicker than other stuff. So you're always going to have a job. But it ebbs and flows, you know. So your name's everything. And while it's ebbing, you still got work coming into your shop because you're good at what you do and people can count on you and your stuff is done correct and right every time. So I know I beat a dead horse. So now we're gonna, uh, we're gonna iron this big piece. If you got a big piece like that, again, just keep your board wet. And I like to take mine, I take my, uh, this is just a piece of canvas, duck cloth, and uh, I take it in and wash it once a week, you know, bleach it up and wash it, which it's due for, especially if I'm doing real light stuff. But um, yeah, okay, so now we're gonna, we'll just, we'll start on this end. Like I said, just the vinyl side, just enough, not a lot, just enough to get it wet. And then we fold it over, lay it flat so it's, you know, working with you. And if it hangs over the edge, pick one side. See them strings I'm talking about? Get rid of those strings, it helps your piece lay flatter. It'll cooperate with you more. Those, those real hard edges like that, they'll iron out a lot easier, okay? And, and you know, you don't have, it doesn't have to be perfect, just the big long ones that you know are gonna give you a, a, a problem. So get it wet. And we're gonna go like down there, half of it, on this half, and then we'll scooch it back and do this top part. But for now, that's that. And then we'll love it up with some of this faultless premium Lux finish. It's like when you start your shirts. But this stuff is cheap. It's like $2.24, so it'll last a long time. You know, have a few cans of this stuff when you're making patterns. It just, it gives it, you know, it starts. Gives it, you know. Okay. You gotta be a weirdo if you wanna be an upholsterer. It says right in the rule book. Okay, here we go. Here we go going, as my buddy Joe says. Here we go going. Okay. And you know, see how it's all bound up like that? Just walk into it. Walk into it on that side. Nice and easy, walk into it on that side, nice and easy. Come up the middle, and come up the middle, middle. Let it sit for a second, come back. Push out to the left, let it sit for a second. Come back, push out to the right, let it sit for a second. Come back here. Push sideways, ride it out, let it sit for a second at the top. There, see how it's starting to lay flat? It'll all come out. But, you know, it's like water, it seeks its own level. So when you're ironing, you know, you don't, 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 you don't gotta push and distort it and, and you, you know, you'll, you'll make the pattern something it's not. So just lightly come over the top of it always and let the weight of the iron and like I said in the um, ATV seat video yesterday, uh, it has memory, just persistence. You know, let it cool, get it real hot, come back and work on this for a while. Let the, see how that's starting to lay flat? And then you just, uh, you just wanna take your time and then you got a, a great pattern. It'll, it'll cooperate with you. It'll lay flat and you're not, you know, trying to lean into it and you got a stick and a ruler and which I've, I use a lot. Sometimes they don't want to cooperate, but most all times they will. So, the field looks real good on this pattern. It's just these edges here. You want to get them real good. And then when it lays down, then you can see some of them, some of them threads, then they'll come out real easy. You know, and then sometimes you might have to hit it again with the water. Well, you only got to do one shot of this starch stuff. And if you don't have it, it'll still work. But it's just, I think that it's really cool stuff. I just started using this particular stuff. Um, 
Who knows, maybe they'll sponsor me and give me some money. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we're looking good there. Okay, and then you, uh, uh, towards your ends, always start in the, in the field and push your way out, okay? And just make sure it's laying flat and you're not distorting it. And while it's hot on some of these, you know, these sketchy ends like that, that's when you grab your board real quick. And then just kind of make sure it's flat and drop it. Put some weight on that end. Because this is our... This is our main end because that's the only one that, you know, this stuff here in the middle, it'll flat just fine. So that's basically it for this. Uh, when you seam rip your pattern apart, your skin, I like to call it this. You got a seat cushion. That's a skin to me. Once you skin it, if there's uh, adjacent uh, gussets or one in the back or one in a hole the way around it, whatever, take your seam ripper. Remember your seam ripper. And gently, pop, 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 you know, don't try to rush it because you might cut it. I cut them all the time, little bits here and there, and then you'll know how to adjust and whatnot later on. But um, just, you know, grab it and take the hook and go chick, 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 and just get it off nice and easy to we have the, the, all the pattern, all of the sew allowances. You know, you want to be cutting them if you can avoid it. <coughs> you know, and then, uh, yeah, get your ironing board out, get it wet. Get your pattern wet and get them flat, flat, not distorted. Heat, yeah, heat them up real good with that iron, but don't, don't get too crazy. You just get them hot and put a board on them. Put some weight on top of that board, just like this. Get in where you fit in. I don't give a whatever you got. I like this little railroad tie. I gotta look around and try to get a like a longer one. That'd be perfect. I don't know, maybe like 18 inches. That'd be sweet. But. Uh, <clears throat> Okay, so yeah, this is pattern making uh, from old patterns. And uh, don't worry if they got holes and big cuts in them. Lay them out flat. Make sure they're flat. Starch them up real good. Iron them out. Weight them down just like we're doing. And uh, even if they got a cushion, like a seat cushion on a truck, and the driver's side's missing, you got that one on the left, use that mirror image like I showed you on these, you know. Sometimes you're forced to, to use one without comparing the two. But it's, uh, it's not as hard as people are making it out to be. Pattern making. And then once we tra start tracing, then I'm going to show you little things to look at, which is next, the next video. So uh, God bless. Thank you. Uh, uh, subscribe and like to my channel, Spit and Tax Upholstery. I'm Colt here in Spokane, Washington. And we're doing some boat seats today. So I'm going to be doing a few. I'm doing this. I got a tripod now. I'm doing it. Myself, my my assistant has abandoned me today. So I'll see you around like a donut. Just a moment. Here we go, going. Okay. How do you stop this thing? Here we go. There we go.